Hi folks, how are you? My name is Walter Rangi and welcome to the Walter Rangi Sports Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while since we interacted in this matters of sports and everything sports. This is a brand new show where we're going to look at all matters sports as we go across all media channels in the world that is local and international media as we get compiled news and bring news to you fun at home and enjoy our sports coverage. Ladies and gentlemen, We've not had sports for a while because of the pandemic and we are excited that we are getting back to normalcy. Some little bit of normalcy here and there, but it, it is a step in the right direction as we get back our sporting lives together. So I want to welcome you to the show and, and again this show is going to be a very, very interactive show where I'm going to ask for your opinion at the tail end of the show. But before that, we're going to discuss what's going to happen across all the weekend matches all sports, that is football, rugby, and I'm going to be joined by a host of guests and I'm going to do all interviews with the top coaches locally and internationally available and those ones who we can get on board. So ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you to our sports train and this is a train that is going to run across all our social media platforms. Welcome, my name is Walter Rangi and in today's show we're going to talk about rugby, the fixtures of this weekend the return to play. We have uh, Dan Carter retiring, we have Super Rugby uh, making a return to our screens and above all we have the Kenya Cup match day one fixtures for the 2021 season and I'm going to be joined by a guest who's going to help in, um, in divulging and also trying to know what um, is happening across uh, local clubs, local media and international media. Alright folks, on Matters Rugby, this this week we had a, a massive name of the game, uh, taking a bow out of the game, and that is Dan Carter. Dan Carter announced his retirement this week, putting uh, an end to his illustrious career, a, a career that has spanned 20 plus years, where he's been able to win two consecutive World Cups. Would like to wish Dan Carter a wonderful retirement, and as he also goes home to live and also take care of his family, perfect timing and the best of luck to Dan Carter. So folks, as we discuss matters rugby, this weekend we have uh, the Kenya Cup making its return to our, of, of our eyes. The fans are all excited about uh, the return of the game. Last weekend we have the Sisim, Sisimka Cup, a charity event that was played out between Cabra Sugar and Kenya Harlequins, and we, in which um, the reigning Enterprise Cup champions Cabra Sugar got one better off Kenya Harlequins in a very, very hot encounter at the Nyaya National Stadium. So that opened up the curtains for rugby this weekend, and which means that uh, the return to, to play is confirmed. And this weekend, we have the first round of games of the 2021 Kenya Cup season. And joining me to discuss um, the Kenya Cup return is Kisi Rugby's team manager, George Sagini. Kariya hey, man. Kosao. Thank you for, me, for having me in the show, but Welcome to the show, man. Santi. It's uh, uh, speaking of which, Kenya Cup is coming back. Yeah, I'm really excited. It's been it's been a while, but uh, since we saw boys, you know, taking it on the field, uh -huh. uh, uh, so I was actually happy seeing Kenya Harlequins play um, uh, Cabras the other week. Um, well, for me, uh, I expected better from Kenya Harlequins, especially because the signings they did during uh, during the off season. But uh, Cabras, Cabras had a better on them. But uh, hopefully, when they meet during the season, um, we are gonna see another Kenya Harlequins. So but on paper, Kenya Harlequins looked a very strong side. Yeah, and, sure. Um, uh, anyone who would uh, would have looked at that uh, team selection from the go would have expected better from uh, from Kenya 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 Kenya. Kenya. But, but we also give it to them that it's the first game of the season mm -hmm. uh, you'd expect jitters here and there teams are not yet well uh, oiled uh, Cabras looked looked like they've been training for quite a while yeah they, they yeah, in yeah very good shape. Yeah, yeah plus especially you know as the, as the team they I think also the incentives they have, you know, you new kids, new captain, new coach. Yes. Those those would, those actually play a lot in, in terms of. Uh, I mean, you, you don't expect a team to have a new kid going in for their first game and losing. Yeah. Yeah. So. But there's always that point of um, the kids 
when you launch a kit mm -hmm. and uh, there's always that bad omen when it comes to launching a kit. Yes, so, so if you lose with a new kit, man, say the season is not going to be well for you. That yeah. is, I, I think that also plays a, a role in terms of um, how they were bold in the field. Yes, yeah, so I think uh, if you actually talk about their scrums, man, okay, Cabras have a, Cab a solid scrum. I, I noticed Cabras uh, obliterated Kenya Harlequins at scrum time. Uh, the yes. set piece was yes. was perfect. They would get front football, mm -hmm. attacking ball. Mm -hmm. Kenya Harlequins could not uh, really match up in terms of a, yes. Uh, the and, and, and if and if you can't get it right in the in those in those scrums and and and, uh, and set pieces, then I, it will be very hard for you to win a game, especially yeah. in rugby. Yeah. Yeah. So. We wish them all the best of the season starts anyway. But they're the Man City of, uh, yeah, of, of course, Kenyan rugby. They have course. the money so they can yeah. easily go out. They have a new coach. Mm -hmm. That is also something worth mm -hmm. noting about. Yeah, true, sure. Uh, they've made uh, very good signings. Uh, they have uh, the likes of Alfred, uh, uh, the guys who moved from, from Machine. Bulls. Yeah, there was also a guy from Machine. But, but he played the other season. Alfred Orega, he, yes. he played the, played the other season. Uh, 2019 season. Yes, yeah, but before, they have... Before, uh, they have uh, the guy from Machine, Teddy, Teddy Akala, mm -hmm. and then they have also uh, who else? Who else? Who else? I saw in the team. Derek Ashundu from, yes, from Western Bulls. Bulls. A very good signing. Yeah. They have um, they have they have a very balanced squad. So True. I'm, and well, depth as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it it would be interesting not to see them up top uh, when it comes to the final. Uh, part True. of the season, but True. True. I think it's, it's it's quite noting that uh, they'll be there. Yeah, I really hope this time round, if they if they'll get to the final, they'll win. I mean, they they've been knocking that door for a very long time, and uh, we never know. Maybe yeah. this time they'll they'll take it or not. So, so how much they want fixtures this weekend? We have uh, Cabral Sugar taking on Masinde Muliro. That is most most are fresh from promotion. Yeah, congratulations to them as well. They yeah. had a. Still a season. Yeah, they had yeah. a very good season. Yeah. Uh, you look at how um, they, they played in the Championship League last mm -hmm. year. That is the 2019 season. Mm -hmm. Well, they they put in a very good uh, a good run. Yes, they played course. Min Machine in the semi final. Min mm -hmm. Machine is not a very easy team to play it's against. Experienced again. Yeah, they're yeah. very experienced yes. and uh, accomplished. Mm -hmm. Then the the next fixture is KCB is taking on another promoted side, Strathmolios. Mm -hmm. Menengai Oilers will be taking on Kenya Harlequins. Yeah. And to top it off, uh, the final match of the weekend is Top Rider Nakuru playing host to Black Blood. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted to get your perspective on the fixtures this weekend and what you think um, might might be the final results. As in, for instance, if you have mm -hmm. Cabras and Masinda Muliro, that is a local derby in Kakamega. Yeah, I think most of those players, they always meet on the streets. I think most of them have also played for Cabras. the same, yeah, yeah, for Cabras. One of the two sides. Yes. Yeah. So I expect it to not, not to be an easy game, but definitely um, uh, Cabras will win. Yeah, on Definitely. paper Cabras will win, but uh, it's an exciting. But it's, it's, a, it's an exciting game. Yeah, yeah it's an exciting game. Uh, the the field to both teams is very familiar because they they'll be playing at the Kakamega Showground, very familiar for most as well. Yes. Uh, because uh, most of those players, especially in the back line for most, they they were actually players. They were Cabras's player initially. So. Yes. That is a team. Th those teams, the players know each other very well. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think I, I bet it on experience. Yes. Experience will win the mini, the the game for for Cabras, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Now KCB versus Strathmolios. That's a very good uh, match for the neutrals. Mm -hmm. KCB, the reigning champions. Yeah. Um, they've not played really a match this season mm -hmm. as we get into mm -hmm. as we get underway into the Kenya sure, Cup season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, w I, I, I'm 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 thinking Coach Colago would. Uh, would, has already named a very strong side, mm -hmm. and uh, you'd see the likes of um, Curtis Lilako, the captain the himself, captain, yeah. Simiu. Um, you they have, have they have a very experienced. They've blended. Yeah, the 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 forwards are very experienced. I think most of them have also played for the Kenya for the national teams, team. Yes. Yeah. So. Notable is also that Andrew Amonde is playing. Still, yeah. Uh, starting mm -hmm. at number eight, I think was. Uh, Peter Waitere, Peter Waitere yeah. on the other yes. flank we have uh, Davis Cheng, that's Chenge. a very solid backline. 
uh, definitely I'm, 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 I'm the locks of Muita and uh, uh, that is at the second row. We have Muita yes. and and uh, who else is there? Uh, well, I, yeah. I think what what Colago has done is he's taken a very experienced side mm -hmm. and blended it with the youth. You have the like of the likes of Asati. Coming yes, into the yes, team. of course, at number nine. And, at number uh, nine. I'd really want to see the pair of uh, Asati and uh, Shaban. Mm -hmm. the, those are very fast players. Yes. Very fast players. So I expect uh, when the ball is getting from the forwards to the back line, uh, I think there's going to be a very fast play for, for, for KCB. So here's, here's what um, uh, Colago has put out as mm -hmm. a match day one team. That is uh, Oscar Sorano. Starting in at prop, coming in at uh, hooker is uh, Griffin Musila, mm -hmm. very experienced. Very experienced. Curtis and Lilaka. he's find his way into the KCB yeah, team he's, captain. He's, he's really fought his yeah. way. Curtis Lilako, the captain, uh, starting in at uh, prop, that finishes the front row. Mm -hmm. Francis Muita comes in at second row, and there's an experienced player uh, partnering Francis Muita, that is Oliver Mangeni. Mangeni of course. A very, very good uh, log, and he's done this for the national team. He's also it's, doing it's it also okay to note that he's, he's been out of injury. Yeah, he, should the season, should the other season have ended, he would have easily missed the final. So yeah, he fractured because, his, uh, yeah. his finger uh, when they were playing against uh, Menengai Kukum Menenga, boys. Yeah, that sure. was in the, the, regular, the regular season. Mm. So uh, I think he's made a quick return, not really a quick return, he's had the COVID pandemic course, helped him yeah. to, to get back into mm -hmm, shape. Mm -hmm. Starting in at number six, we have Andrew Amonde. At number eight, we have Peter Oitere and finishing off um, the front, uh, that is the back row, is Davis Chenga. And then at nine, we have Sam, uh, Samuel Asati. Mm -hmm. Then at ten, in comes Shaban Ahmed. Yes. Coming in at number 12 is Brian Omondi, very experienced. Brian Omondi has always stand up for KCB. Especially at Tico that Tico. number 12. Yes, Tico has, always. Has always, has always given his uh, little bit of shift mm. uh, in support of KCB. True. And we have Peter Kilonzo uh, coming in at 13. Mm -hmm. And we have Isaac Njoroge. They, you can never go past Isaac Njoroge. Uh, not, 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 actually you can't. Okay. I mean, that guy tackles. He's <laughs> always, he's always, yeah, Ukujini. he goes, Anakata Miwa, we call it Anakata Miwa. Very it? good, yeah. uh, and then finishing off at um, number 11 is uh, Geoffrey Okwach, mm -hmm. and then at 15 we have Esau Otieno, also very, very experienced, and I'm, I'm glad he's making his way Wait into, to, into the KCB yeah. uh, team one. Mm -hmm. um, and then finishing off, the subs are George Asin, Peter Uko, Juma, Stephen Wamai, Rocky Aguko. Michael Anjala, Levi Amunga, and Darwin Mkiza. So this looks like a comfortable uh, game for KCB okay, yes, yeah. at the least. Then we have the Menengai Oilers taking on Kenya Harlequins. That one has always been... That one should be... <laughs> for the longest time, I think Menengai Oilers have had a better, a better for against KCB, especially in the shorter version. Against uh, Kenya Harlequins? Uh, sorry, against Kenya Harlequins, but uh, I think this time round... Um, just to throw a spanner in the works, they beat Kenya Harlequins home and away in yes, the 2019-2020 season. Yes. Yeah. So, um, Kenya Harlequins have had an opportunity to play at least one match. Mm -hmm. So, I think the coach has already looked at what yes. his charges yes. are, uh, what to adjust this weekend mm -hmm. and what to do to mm -hmm. try and see if they can get one over the Menengai Oilers. True. However, just to mention, Gibson Weru coaches, drills his team so well. And the Meningai Oilers side is a team that can shock anyone. Yes. Anyone in the country. Yes. So, uh, judging on the inexperience that they've had mm -hmm. across the past two, three years, mm -hmm. I would uh, I'd probably vouch for, slightly for Kenya Harlequins, just because they're at home, but on the cards, this could be a very, very uh, challenging encounter for Kenya Harlequins. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that is for, for me and uh, for Kenya Cup that is the match of That's the match of the yes, weekend. It's the match of the weekend. Yeah. yeah. Menengai Oilers against uh, Kenya Harlequins. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, to finish off uh, match day one fixtures we have uh, Top Fry Nakuru taking on the Black Blood. The Black Blood. Uh, <laughs> the team that survives really every other time, every other year. That so. team has has done literally 
everything mm -hmm. to never go down to the championship yes. league. I think I think for them winning the cup has not been relegated. Th yeah. th that for them is. But interesting to season. note. Interesting mm -hmm. to note. Um, the 2019 fixture had uh, black blood. I think at around number six or seven. Yes. They were. They were they, almost they were, getting into the playoffs. Yes. 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 They did, they had a very good year. Season two. And uh, if you con if, if you look at if you contextualize mm -hmm. what Black Blood has grown into, mm -hmm. they've I think they've grown into a team that um, not necessarily wants to fight for the last day relegation and promotion mm -hmm. scalp, but they just want to fight throughout the season. Yes, yes. If they get Impala, they'll probably they, play well true. against Impala. Mm -hmm. If they go to Nakuru or if Nakuru comes, it's, it's always a match going to yes. the Blood being to play uh, Black Blood. Mm -hmm. So I think for that one, would uh, I don't know what's what's your prediction on that? I uh, still uh, still um, uh, top fry at home. Top fry at home. Yes. So uh, which means uh, they enjoy the the home advantage. However, remember with the uh, COVID protocols, there are no fans. No fans. So yeah. that's all, that that also neutralizes the home ground advantage. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a top fry fan, so. Definitely. Oh, you're a top fry yeah, fan? Yeah, I'm a top fry fan. No, not so many people know that, but <laughs> way from Kitambo, I've been... Uh, Fox, he's, <laughs> he's finally come out of Yeah, I'm a top prize fan, so definitely I'll go for them to win the game. I, 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 I'd, I'd wish you all the best. I am a very strong fan of uh, Black, Black Blood. Blood yeah. And I, I, that's my team, and, and, and I enjoy being around Black Blood, so this is a match that we're going mm -hmm. to fight between. So you said... Um, Nakuru is winning. Yes. Nakuru I also winning. have friends in Nakuru. Yeah. <laughs> hi, uh, Moseti. Hi, how are you? <laughs> you're losing this weekend, but, well, you're losing to We, we, we will never lose. Yeah. We'll never lose. So, uh, Kenya Cup, match day one. We are done, uh, folks. Mm -hmm. Our match day predictions are Cabral Sugar is going to get one better against uh, Masinde Muliro. It's promotion time for Masinde Muliro, so the Jitas of coming up from championship and also the experience that Cabras has. So we're going to give that to Cabra Sugar. And then second match of the weekend, KCB taking on Strathmolios. Of course, KCB with, uh, with having named a very strong side and, and the experience that they have within their ranks, I'd expect them to get one better of the Strathmolios, the students from Strathmore. The Meningai Oilers uh, are playing host to Kenya Harley Queens uh, at the refinery. And this is a very, very hard game for Kenya Harley Queens folks. I, I mean, if you go as per the history of uh, the encounter, Kenya Harley Queens has had a very, very tough run against Meningai Oilers. That's in the local circuit, that is both 7s and 15s. Mm -hmm. So I'd expect Coach Gibson Weru to have one in the bag this weekend against Kenya Harley Queens. However, Kenya Harley Queens has made quite an impression in terms of the signings that they've made this year. So. It, it's a balance. It's a balance between the two teams. But I'd go for Meningai Oilers to win this one. And in the final game of the day, we have pitting the the, the, the weight between myself and my my guest here, George. George is supporting Jofra and Akura FC, and I'm supporting Black Blood. And we are wishing for all our teams to win this weekend. So that brings us close to the Kenya Cup fixtures. Mm -hmm. With a call on Black Blood winning, George Top has... Buddha. <laughs> Blood Buddha. <laughs> and across the pitch, ladies and gentlemen, we have the EPL fixtures for this weekend. And this weekend we have Manchester City taking on West Ham United. West Brom will be home uh, against Brighton. Leeds United will be taking on Aston Villa. Newcastle United will be taking on Wolves. Crystal Palace will be taking on Fulham. Leicester City will be taking on the ever losing Arsenal. Tottenham will be up against Burnley. Chelsea will be take, will be at home taking on uh, Manchester United and Sheffield United will be taking on Liverpool and in the last game of the round of 26 we would have Everton taking on Southampton and and my guest here would uh, would also try and divulge much into the sport this weekend so George yes. uh, you being a Manchester United fan mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think this weekend's game between uh, Chelsea and Manchester United is the biggest game of the weekend. Of course. What 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 are your thoughts about the game? Um, as, a, as a Manchester United fan, yes. I, I really hope uh, Oleguna doesn't play the game. 
<laughs> because I think the guy when 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 we when, when, when we when we really want his goalkeeping skills is is not there. When we don't want, he's there. So uh, are you saying he's uh, he's he's gotten old? He's and out. He... I think he's out of form or something. Or is it because you have a new goalkeeper? You know when you. Have I think Anderson. New... Yes, of course. Anderson. Anderson has has risen to form. I think he's. he's if I was the coach this weekend for Manchester United, I'd have chosen uh, Anderson to take on the goalkeeping uh, roles okay. because the games that he's, he's been played has been really, really, really uh, turning up well for for Manchester United. Uh, but uh, of course, um, Manchester United this season, when we really wanted them to win games, games that mattered, games yes. that would have uh, had them still at the top of the table, they did not. Yes. So. For them, I don't know what happens when they, they get on the field because they have good players, they have better players, players who are experienced. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I still want them to beat Chelsea because I, for, for one reason, I don't like Chelsea. <laughs> well, I, folks, I am a Chelsea fan, just to put that out of the way. And um, I, I, I don't really see United uh, beating Chelsea this weekend. The simple reason as to why is uh, they've had a cluster of fixtures. For instance, they played yesterday, that mm -hmm. is on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're playing on Saturday or Sunday. I'm, I'm not so sure, but I think, uh, no, the game is on Sunday. Sunday. So which means uh, Manchester United would have uh, probably two days rest. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but Chelsea having played in the Champions League on Tuesday, which means they have slightly longer periods. Yeah, uh, you guys have a good rest. game, but now. And, no, uh, no one expected that you'd beat uh, you'd beat Atletico. We beat, we beat Atletico, <laughs> and it was very comfortable. I was yeah, really surprised. Yeah, so uh, that was that was a really good game. I think uh, if if I was to say this, uh, you'd you'd go to that to Kent's game against Manchester United with your heads high because you are out of a winning a winning a yeah. very uh, a, from a very strong side, yeah. and you are playing at home again. Yeah, we're so, also playing at home. So uh, that that that's a relative easy game for Chelsea, right? Nah, <laughs> we are not going to give it. <laughs> we won't give you an easy game, but no. All right, so, folks. Um, I'd like to do a, a little bit of a match day prediction for the EPL. That is the round of 26. So Manchester City are playing West Ham at home. Not an easy game for Manchester City, but they are on a roll. So which means um, I'd give uh, Manchester City the win. So that is Manchester City win. Uh, West Brom versus Brighton. That's uh, pretty much a uh, relegation uh, encounter. That's, that's the two teams are pretty fighting for for promotion and relegation status for next season. So which means uh, West Brom playing at home might have a slight advantage. So I'll probably go with uh, West Brom for this. Leeds, Leeds, uh, the mercurial team of the Premier League, the team that plays a thousand touches uh, per game, the team that really makes it interesting to watch them is at home and they're taking on Aston Villa. Aston Villa have, have become a mid-table team, a very balanced side with uh, very good signings. They brought in the likes of uh, Ross Barkley from Chelsea and loan. They bought um, Watkins from uh, Brentford for, from, that is from uh, the championship. So which means um, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely look at this game as a very tight game. But uh, I'm inclined to go with Leeds because they're playing at home. Uh, the home ad advantage should really give, give them a drive, that is for match day uh, 26. Well, we have Newcastle playing host to Wolves. Wolves have a very good team, they have a very good coach in Nuno Sanchez. Uh, they, have, they have a very good Portuguese side uh, are playing in the EPL. I'd, 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 I'd really look at this game as a uh, as a battle for mid-table status, and that is Newcastle and uh, Wolves. But Newcastle being at home uh, might also offer uh, Wolves a, a run for their money. So I'm, I'm inclined to go for a draw between the two uh, between the two sides. But maybe Wolves might get one better off Newcastle. Crystal Palace will be playing host to Fulham. Crystal Palace in London. That's an easy game for them. Hopefully, Fulham is an Ingl uh, is a London team also. That, so that's a London derby. London derbies are never easy. Derbies are never easy, but uh, preferably looking at the form that uh, the two teams go into this weekend, I'd, uh, I'd be inclined to go with Crystal Palace uh, to get one 
over Fulham, but Fulham are also a very good side. They brought in the likes of Ruben Loftus Cheek from Chelsea. They've made very good signings, um, and they're fighting for their uh, their survival status in the Premier League. So it's a very very tough encounter between the two sides. But um, well, Crystal Palace versus Fulham. I'd go for Crystal Palace. Uh, then Leicester versus Arsenal. Well, George, this game Leicester versus Arsenal proves to be not not really an easy game. Mm -hmm. It's it's not an easy game on paper. Yes. Leicester are high flying. They're a top four team already in the in the league. What 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 do you make of uh, this game? I think Leicester will win. They'll beat yeah. Arsenal. Comfortably. Leicester will beat Arsenal. That one we we can't really argue because. Arsenal are playing, uh, they, they played against uh, Man City the other weekend, they they really put a good fight, unfortunately they did not win, so I don't know if they just can't score goals, they they, they, they play well but they can't score goals, but Leicester, Leicester would play well and they would still score, so okay. I think Leicester will just win the game. Leicester will win. Yeah. Uh, Arsenal are fresh from winning um, in the Europa League versus, yes. in the final minutes actually, versus Benfica. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not really sure if the, they would be drained uh, physically, but... No, not really. It's, it's, it's a tough encounter for Arsenal and uh, I'd be inclined to also say that uh, Leicester would win this one. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Then we have uh, Tottenham versus Burnley. Tottenham in the Premier League. Um, I mean, a team, a team that everyone expected mm -hmm. with Jose Mourinho coming mm -hmm. in. They made a host of uh, signings. signings. They, they brought they in Sergio Aguilon. They mm -hmm. brought in um, uh, Vinicius, Carlos mm -hmm. Vinicius. They have, they have good players who, on a, on a good day, can be able to challenge for the Premier League. But for some strange reason, they went. Uh, they, they, they had dipped. a very bad run yes. in the mid, uh, in the middle of the season. Mm -hmm. But I'd, 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 I'd give them this one because they're hosting Burnley. Burnley has not. Burnley blows hot and cold. Uh, a few weeks ago, they beat Liverpool at home. Yes. Nobody expected mm -hmm. that. They they are a team that can pull a surprise uh, one way or another. It, it, it's, it's not really a team to underrate. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a tough match between Tottenham and Burnley. I'd expect the two sides to score, uh, but I'd give the overall uh, win to Tottenham based on experience and also the value of their team. Chelsea versus uh, Manchester United. You called uh, this game in favor of Manchester United. Of course. I called it in favor of uh, Chelsea, but I mean, it's. We will we'll meet here after the game. We'll meet here after the game. So, you guys back at home, man. If you are going to follow your team this week, there are no parks in Manchester And you are a United. Chelsea fan. You rest assured back <laughs> at home that Chelsea is winning this weekend and they got you. Keep the blue flag flying high. And in another game, we have Sheffield United taking on uh, the current leaders. No, Liverpool cannot be the current leaders. The defending, uh, champions. The defending champions. What do you make of Liverpool's uh, recent run? They, they've been out of form Kidogo and I, I really don't know what's, what, what's wrong with the team. Especially, you know, I'm really complaining about our goalkeeper, but... <laughs> They really have serious problems with their goalkeeper, and, and, especially Klopp said, <laughs> their games. Yes, their Klopp games. said, Klopp said uh, his goalkeeper had uh, cold feet. Wow, I don't know. But well, <laughs> I, I think Liverpool, um, just just in a in a nutshell, just a snapshot, Liverpool have um, play a very um, very deep game. They, if you look at how they went uh, on onto the title run, they had. They had this type of play that they press really high. They run across the pitch for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. But I think it's catching up with them. And that is why they have this number, the highest number of injuries in the league. They sure. lost Van Dijk, mm -hmm. they lost the likes of Jota, they lost uh, Matip, they lost Fabinho. At some point, they lost uh, Thiago Alcantara. Yeah, and those are very good they, players yeah, for the, for the very, team. Very, very good mm. players. They've now, this past week, they lost uh, their captain, that is Jordan Henderson. Mm -hmm. So it's not been an easy run. But also up front, they have a struggle in the likes of Mane and Salah going off from. And, and, and you'd also be surprised to note that besides the fact that Salah and Mane are not scoring a lot, Salah is still the, the top scorer in the Premier League. So something is not right at Liverpool and something is also not wrong in terms of mm. uh, them being uh, having the top scorer in the league. So, But we really expect uh, a lot from them as the defending champions. Yeah. 
And lastly, we have Everton, Amazi side, uh, culprit uh, fresh from beating Liverpool, uh, mm -hmm. taking on Southampton at home. What, uh, what would be your score prediction for Everton versus Southampton? I think Everton will win the game. Okay. Yeah. Everton are really flying high. And I think they, they will win the game. For me, I'll, I'll go for Everton. Okay. Yeah. So Everton uh, is your prediction for this week. So folks, my last prediction will be Everton to beat Southampton. And uh, this, this is March day 26 in the EPL. And um, uh, I, I think another 12 rounds to go. So keep it here for the show. Uh, we'll provide uh, in-depth analysis on what's happening, the fixtures, pre-match analysis, post-match uh, analysis were also coming your way. And folks, back at home, I'd like to also invite you to play the score prediction game with me. I've done my score predictions. You at home can also choose your games for this weekend as we all keep it sporty. Remember, this is the Walter Rangi Show. Our first episode, we love you and we hope to see you here again next time. Thank you, keep it sporty. <laughs>